Welcome to the very first episode of What's That Mean? I've got Ryan Curlin here from Alpha Architect. He is no stranger to All About Your Benjamins. And what this new series is going to be, for as long as this crisis goes on and we hear about all these things going on in the markets or in the economy that we don't know what it is, I want to go out to my friends that are smarter than I and have them break these things down so that a kindergartner or maybe a first grader could understand. So I reached out to Ryan this week because I've seen a lot of conversation on Twitter, our friend Andrew Miller and some others talking about this discrepancy between bond ETF uh, and bond mutual funds. And there's a, you know, the, the price and the way they said it, there's a big difference between where they're trading. So what is all this hoopla about the NAV of bond ETF funds versus bond mutual funds? Yeah, it, it's certainly a, a topic that's at the front of advisor's mind right now, but I think the best way to understand it first, let's just get, go back and understand why we invest in the first place. So Justin, if, if you gave, uh, yeah, if, if you gave me a hundred dollars today and I told you I'd give you a hundred dollars back in 10 years, what would you say? From a money standpoint, I would say, heck no. If you would be my friend over those 10 years, I would maybe consider it. Cause at least I got your friendship. That's right. But yeah. no, from a money standpoint, why would I give you a hundred bucks and get nothing for it? Yeah. And then, you know, if, if, if you told me, you know, or if I told you, all right, fine, I'll give you $200 back in 10 years. Now I'll take that. I'll take that's, that. that. Yeah. That, that's getting better. Like, you know, maybe now you're going to run the math in your head. Hey, what does this do? Right. And, and, and obviously if, you know, if I told you, Hey, Justin, give me a hundred dollars, I'll give you a million dollars back in 10 years. You'd be like, Yes. Yes, please. You know, sign me up. Right. So, so, so we understand then the concept of uh, time and return when it comes into investing. Um, so then what's going on in the bond market ETFs? How, how does liquidity play into that? Okay. So back to the same story, you give me a hundred dollars again. I tell you in 10 years, I promise to pay you back $200. You say, great. A year from now, right? You told me I could have the money for 10 years. A year from now, your house burns down. You had uh, no money in your bank account because you spent it all on your CrossFit home gym. Right? <laughs> so, so you need, you're like, hey, Ryan, I know I gave you $100. I need money back today. I got to get my family in a ho hotel room tonight. Like I, I just, I need money, right? And I go, hey, man, you told me I could give you 200 back and in not, you know, nine years from now, uh, you know what, I, I, I'll give you, I'll give you a hundred dollars back or I'll give you $80 back today. Like, and you go fine. Like I need that money now. Right. Um, but now let's make that situation even worse. Same thing happens. You spend all your money on the CrossFit home gym, your, your house burns down. You need money for a hotel room that night. You come running to me, Ryan, I know I gave you a hundred dollars. I say, dude, you're not going to believe this my house burnt down too. <laughs> I don't have any money. And you're like, well, do, do you have a little bit? And it's like, yeah, dude. All right. I'll give you uh, I'll give you $20. If I don't have to pay you back $200 in 10 years, you go, you say yes. Cause, cause you need the money. Right. Um, so that is kind of what's happening right now in the ETF world and in the mutual fund world and in the stock world and any investment, everybody's house just burnt down. And the ETF vehicle is giving you a way. And the reason you're seeing that price down for like investment grade bonds, I don't know the exact number, so I'm just making it up. Nobody go crazy on this, but, but you know, the investment grade bond funds may be down like 8% or something like that. And it's, and everybody's going, how the heck is an investment grade bond fund down 8% on the ETF? And I look at the mutual fund and it's only down 2% or something like that. Well, the ETF is telling you what, right? They both own the same thing. The, the mutual fund owns investment grade bonds. The ETF owns investment grade bonds. The ETF is saying, hey, we're out here trading this. And if you're coming to us right this instant and saying, I need cash now and I can't wait for an hour from now and I can't wait for two days from now, deliver me my cash now. Then basically the, the market makers in the bond fund are saying, you know, Hey, our house is on fire too, but 
if you're willing to take an 8% haircut on an investment grade bond, here, here you go. Because, you know, we can offer that to the market. Uh, did I explain that well? Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was good. Um, and then, and where's the difference between, okay, well, Ryan, the mutual funds down, you know, I'm just making up the numbers again, right? But 2%, the ETFs down 8%. Where's that difference? That's concerning to me. Uh, if with anything in life, if the volatility is removed or hidden, that's typically a bad thing in, in the long run, even if it feels better in the short run. Mm-hmm. So I can't speak. I'm not sitting on, obviously not sitting on the, uh, those, those mutual fund, um, uh, bond decks, uh, but they're, they're, they're trading the same instruments. The ETFs are giving us the live price of what these underlying instruments, because again, it's the same thing um, that they're making, you know, the, the same, they're owning the same product, the investment grade bond funds in these examples. Um, so where's that volatility disappearing to? I don't know. I think at some point you're going to uh, see a convergence between the ETF pricing and the mutual fund pricing uh, and, yeah, that'll just have to play out. So I'm going to link to the blog post that this will sit on. So this will be on YouTube, but it'll be on the blog as well. Your very first appearance on All About Your Benjamins, you talked about the structure of ETFs versus mutual funds. And, you know, mutual funds are pooled assets. ETF is kind of more, as the, as the owner of the ETF, you own the underlying holdings, which is why that's, the ETF is showing real time because they're selling each of those bonds out when that one share is redeemed where correct me if i'm wrong the mutual the bond mutual fund it's pulled so in theory they could cherry pick which ones they're selling or what they're liquidating to give redemptions which might minimize might have that might be the reason for that spread is that a safe way to put it out there yeah yeah you know there's a little bit of flexibility uh in there on on the etf side uh the 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 concern to me is that if the if the mutual fund managers are saying, okay, well, all these people are coming and redeeming this active mutual fund. And again, this is what I talked about before on your uh, show, you know, whatever that was months ago, a year ago. Um, but yeah, if, if the mutual funds are redeeming the more liquid names, um, so they're redeeming cash maybe in this example, which is okay. Um, and they're redeeming, uh, the more liquid securities they have in the portfolio. Well, that would mean that the people who are still owning that mutual fund then own a lower quality basket of stuff than they own the day before mm-hmm. that to me. And that was what I talked about a year ago. That, that, that's the concerning thing to me. Um, you know, Hey, what's this stuff worth mm-hmm. that I own? What's it actually worth? And, and am I going to, in you know, in a month or a day or a week, like, am I going to see this, this all ratchet down because you gave out, you know, already gave out the cash and, and the good stuff to the early redeemers and I'm going to get um, punished later. Like that's a, that's a concern or question I would have. Yeah. Fair, fair. And, and just like, Full disclosure, I own bond ETFs and bond mutual funds. So I'm not, I'm not one way or the other. I just think that this is a good explanation to understand why there, why there might be a difference between the two. Because if you've been following along, or even if you're just an investor on your own and you're looking at you own one bond ETF and you, own, you see another bond mutual fund and you see a difference, why is that? You know, we have a tendency to chase returns. And maybe you're sitting in this ETF that looks worse than you go to the, the mutual fund, not fully understanding why there's a difference. And, and also... ETFs are transparent daily holdings. Mutual funds, you're not going to know for a quarter what they're holding in there. What do they liquidate to, to do these redemptions? So you could be going to, if anything, if you wanted to look for a chance to arbitrage, you potentially, not a, not a recommendation, don't go out and do this. But what people have been talking about doing is moving from mutual fund to ETF, going from the one that's not down as much, going to the one that's down more in the thought that in that convergence, one comes down while the other comes up. So you've moved from the one that's up, you move to the one, you know, buy low, sell high. That's kind of what could be doing. Uh, You could end up shifting to sell the high, to buy the low, and then ride that back up. So again, not recommending that you go out there and do that. Don't start a hedge fund trying to R mutual funds and ETFs. But that was the conversation that I saw that for a second, you know, being a professional, 
I had to think twice about what's, what's all the excitement about and why is that happening? And you are my go-to expert, but I did um, have a backup in mind. If you did a crappy job, I was calling Corey Hofstein and I figured he could come in and, and explain it as well. So I won't call, I'll, I'll save Corey for another one. You did a good job. Um, go. Any closing thoughts on this whole conversation about why the mutual funds and the ETFs might be looking different right now? Yeah, I mean, I would just say best recommendation. The, 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 the point of this, where this would be most useful, I would say is sit tight. Uh, you, you, you may see these mutual fund prices dip down, um, but, you know, you'll, you'll at least know why it's happening. It, um, you know, but, but, but don't go out and do anything. Just be aware of what's happening. We're in a liquidity crisis. This is unfortunately what happens in liquidity crisis, right? Right now you're seeing gold go down. You're seeing bonds go down. You're seeing equities go down. You're seeing everything go down because people need cash. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the best thing you can do if you have any sort of time, you know, if you don't need to sell, you know, wait. If, if you didn't have a plan to use this cash for five years anyway because it's in your retirement account, well, then wait, you know, and, and hopefully you're, you're built to do that. Don't, don't feel like you got to catch anything random here. My closing thought, I'll end on something you just said. I think the, the, the big key is understanding. And that's why I want to do these videos is I, I operate on the belief that if you understand why things are happening, even if it sucks, you're more likely to stick to your plan because you know why it's going. Like if there's fear and if there's unknown and you can't explain and you don't know why things are going, then you might just throw your hands up and cause more harm. Or in this situation, you might chase something that maybe you shouldn't chase. So there is the potential that maybe moving from one vehicle to the other would make sense, but it could also be the wrong move, which again goes back to what's the ultimate plan? Why are you investing? Yeah. What's the long-term goal? What's your time horizon? And then I'm gonna plug from my side of the table, talk to your financial advisor. See, does this make sense? What is your plan calling for? Why do you own that particular fund? And is, is it needing to be reevaluated? Or is that just what's going on in a rare instance and you just need to sit tight, allow things to recover? And what happened on March 20th, 2020, won't even be able, identifiable in two or three years. Um, so I, the whole point is just to better understand because I think that gives you a better chance to stick to the plan. So yep. Ryan, it is a Friday afternoon. I know we're all quarantined, but I'm, I see the champagne in the background. So it looks like you right. might be ready to have a good time tonight. My so, girlfriend's an artist, so she painted that. That's art? That's art. That's like the banana, the, the banana on the, the wall yeah. with the, the tape. I won't get you in trouble. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. That's a beautiful painting. So, Ryan, I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure we'll have you back on in the future to talk more ETF stuff. So, appreciate it. Hopefully, this answered the question of what's that mean. And now you know the difference of what's going on with the bond ETFs and the mutual funds. Yeah, uh, mutual fund bond funds. So, have a great weekend. And we'll see you the next time one of these pops up.